Hey YouTubers, it is me. The video was too long, so I'm doing it again. Oh, you can just no, I'm not cutting and splicing and doing all that because I'm trying to get this video uploaded. So we're gonna do the Fast and Furious version. I'd like to give a shout out to one virtuous woman for mentioning her video of the day. Thank you so much. Um, send me a picture of the sheep you have. Do you know exactly what breed of sheep you have? Are they California mutants or the California reds? Uh, you could start crossbreeding in a Rambouillet or a Merino sheep to start getting a um, nets of skin fiber. Uh, if you have California Reds, then honey, you already have a dual-purpose sheep, which means you can use the fiber from those sheep. I have some over there in a the bag. That stuff is soft. So that's one of your options: is breeding in a, a, a softer wool sheep with the flock you already have, without going through the expense of getting rid of your meat sheep and starting a new. You could maybe pull out one or two of your you use with the softest fur and then get you uh or get you a ram um like a merino ram or a rambouillet ram and start breeding that softness into your flock or cordell something like that that's just an option um the this the fiber you have may be already be usable fiber. Another thing is, for a beginning spinner, you don't necessarily need next to softness fiber for practicing. That coarse of wool is a lot easier to learn to spin on than the really soft, silky stuff because sometimes it slides faster and it's harder for you to control. You can also make items that are not next to skin with that wool from those sheep. You can make, um, you can weave for floor rugs. Um, spin for curtains, you know. Excuse me. There's lots of different items, teapot cozies, little coat for your dogs. Um, there's lots of things you can make with that fiber that aren't next to skin. So you you don't necessarily have a product that you as you consider to be waste. Um, what you need to do is get you a sample of that wool off your animal, and also if you're going to start keeping a couple of your sheep for the purpose of using their fiber. For spinning, and you might want to depend on what kind of area you live in, whether it's dusty or where there's a lot of twigs and grass and sage that get stuck in their in their um, fleece. Then you may consider of coating the one or two sheep that you want to keep to try and save their wool um, for for using for your spinning. Now, if they are a dual purpose sheep, which is considered a meat sheep and a wool sheep, then you're already good to go. You just need to figure out which two, not one, not the ram, because they have this stuff called yoke, and you probably know what I'm talking about. That gets in their fur, okay, and their fiber, and uh, it sometimes it stains the fiber. It is nasty yellow color. And don't use the ram. Use your ewes. Two of you pick out two of your girls and coat them, and use those for the their fleeces, okay. Um. You could get two girls who are um, hair sheep, so to speak, and bring them into your herd and keep your ram you have. Or you could do you could replace your ram with a hair sheep ram, a rambouillet, or a merino ram, or a cordial ram, and chevrot whatever soft wool you decide on. Cordial is absolutely. Oh my God! I would get that rambouillet or the cordial myself. If it was me, I would be getting a rambouillet or a cordial. Ashley, tell your husband that you want a rambouillet ram and two cordial ewes. There you go, girl. That's what you need to do. So yes, yes, that's what I would do if it was me. Other than that, you know, like I said, you don't have to learn on next to soft fiber. Okay, that's just my tip for that. Um, what I did this weekend, if you saw my other videos, guys, you saw I went to the fiber mill again. Yay, Miss Wet Farms, Eric and Jenna. So me and Miss Carrie went out there and we were playing with free ticket, which is the horse. And then they let us, there was a tour earlier in the day and we had a great time. There was an awesome young man there. I gave him one of my crocheted um, cows, the light beige colored one you guys have seen sitting on top of my mannequin when it was over there and he was an awesome I mean this little this boy he was probably I would say he was about eight or nine maybe maybe ten at the most 
very respectful. Yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. Not whiny. Wonderful kid. Very good little boy. And he was asking me about my cow. And I was showing him how you wear it and everything. And it looked good on him. It matched his jacket, too. He color tested that thing. So guess what? I gave it to him. And he, they said he wore it um, until they made him take it out off to take his shop before they went, he went to bed. So he really enjoyed it. And it made me feel good knowing that, you know, you know, someone is out there enjoying something that I made. And uh, it took interest in something like that at that age. And I also taught somebody how to spin on the spinner this weekend, too. Hopefully, she'll keep it up. So, Carrie blended some fiber. And this is, you can't see the true color of it. It's more of a, a yam, sweet potato, pumpkin pie color. This is kind of bright because of the light. It's going to get dark in here. If I cut my hair. And it's still with the backlight. It's still not showing the true color. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. I uh, I need better lighting. Y'all like, oh, you're blinding this. You're blinding this. That's kind of it right there. But anyway, Carrie, um, Eric and Jenna let us use the picker and the drum card. Eric did the drum card and him and Jen. But they let us use the picker to blend our fibers. And and this is what Carrie did. Um, she did this and she did some other colors. And then she and I swapped. I took the Angora Rabbit that I had, which was like a blue-gray, silvery white with a little bit of like mauve in it. I took my Angora. I took the cream colored Punta. I took the gray Lincoln. And I took the cream colored, almost bone white, um, Churro. And I blended all that together. And this is what I got. It is a very light gray. It also put some mohair in it that Jenna gave me. But it is so soft. It is, oh God, it's ridiculously soft. I could not even believe that there is freaking Punta and Churro in this. That's how soft this is now. But she called it um, Snowy Owl. And she said, I have to spin it and make a Hogwarts Express shawl from it because it looks like, she said it looks like a snow owl to her. So that's what we did at the mill. Um, I skeined up and I put the tag on it. I still need to wash it. But it's, it's pretty balanced as it is. I can show you that. It's already ba pretty balanced. Um... That's what happens when you have your regular spinning wheel back. You can spin yarn your way. But I still need to wash it because this is shuttling it and it does have the ability to bloom a little bit um, to get a little air, more air back in between the and, and poof it out so it'll be a true salt weight yarn. So I finished. So that is done. I just, like I said, I got to wash it. And I'm sorry for repeating myself. But y'all know I do that sometimes. She's repeating herself. Girl, you repeat yourself too much. She's talking to herself. Yes, I am. Uh, I don't know. Let's show you. This is what I finished. I did these hats. There's four of them. Two for my neighbor's son and two for my co-worker's son. And uh, this is that camouflage black, gray, and white red heart yarn. I don't even know if they... It was in the box, that big box back right there. So, and it's softer than uh, I was expecting too. But um, when I was at the meal, Jenna gave me these. These are meal ends. This is what was left on the cones after she did her 250 yards um, for her regular skein sizes. So she gave these to me. So guess what? That's going to be part of it. That's right. That's going to be part of my May Winsworth Swarm giveaway. And then I decided to keep in theme with the purples. I decided to add this skein of my hand spun. Okay? This is what one of what I call my uh, remnant skeins. Because it's a bunch of stuff from different cones that were left over. Skeins that were left over for my spinning. So I call it a remnant skein. 
So that's four skeins. These skeins probably have anywhere from 75 to 100 yards left on them. Um, mine is probably somewhere in the same vicinity, 75 to 100 yards. So, but it's, it's thick. Mine is a worsted weight, whereas this is fingering. This is a, this is a light fingering, and these are fingering. So, those are four skeins of yarn now. They'll go um to add to the giveaway basket. And I've ordered some stuff on Etsy to add to the giveaway basket as well. And just let me know if you guys want me to put some um fiber and a spindle in the basket. Maybe a newbie spindle will win. Um and so I can do that too. I can add some different fibers that I have. Because I have a lot. I can add some to the basket as well, like a little spinner sampler for you guys. Um, and I think you guys will enjoy it. Head is itching. No, I haven't dyed my gray yet. This is not an ugly gray. It's a nice silvery gray. If it was like that dirty gray hair, I'd be going to dye that stuff in a heartbeat. I'm thinking about doing like my husband's all like, you should let it grow like rogue. On the X-Men, I'm like, whatever, dude. Why don't you grow your beard like Teddy Riley for me? Have, give me the Teddy Riley goatee. Hey, why don't you Teddy Riley goatee? That's what he thinks. So that's it. That's that. I uh, condensed my 22 minute video down now to 11 minutes, almost 12. Oh, yeah. I will add links <coughs> to Winswept Farms, to the Hogwarts Express Shawl. Um, to the Sheep's Company, um, uh, Knit Girls, oh yeah, and, um, on Ravelry, my, the World of Warcraft group I belong to, we are also doing a spin along, so if you're a Warcraft spinner, and you want to join, um, I'll post a link to that group as well, and because this is the yarn that I decided to use for the spin along, because it reminded me of the Badlands. So that I'm using this yarn, and it's gonna be Badland theme. I also have some a red um, bat, so I'm gonna spin these up and ply them together and see what I get. But yeah, so I'll put links to that as well, so you guys can feel free. Even if you're not a World of Warcraft person and you're a spinner, you feel free to join us for the spin along because it's gonna be a lot of fun. And you can look at lots of screenshots online of the game just just to get some inspiration if if you don't play the game. And that's it for the night. You guys take care. Um, have a safe and wonderful night. Um, I'll see you guys for the next cast off uh, Monday. Uh, Neen Crochet. I haven't heard from you or seen you online in a while. So I hope everything is okay with you. Um, let everybody know that you're good. You know, Let us know you're still alive and everything's okay. Because we do care about you. And, and, and we do. It's a community. We're a community. And so we get worried when we don't see one of our people online in a while. Um, if any of her family members are watching this, then, you know, you can let her know that, you know, people want, want to make sure she's okay. And that's it. Uh, here we call them a well-being check. So, consider yourself put on check.